Okay, if I look at all of the little buttons right now, Sherry, it looks like episode 38, can you believe it, 38, of Conversations is now live. Wow, 38. Can you believe it? 38. Wow, and then we're in June, did you know that? Oh, I saw that. You know how I know it's June? My grandson just turned 17 yesterday. Oh, wow. We're at 17. You're not old 17. enough. 17. That's what I told him. <laughs> you are not old enough for a 17-year-old grandkid. That's what I told him. That's what I told my daughter. I said, hey, I I'm not yet. And when my, I told that to my granddaughter once, I said, um, I'm not giving permission to this. She said, Grandma, you don't have any say in the matter. Okay. <laughs> Wow, she's <laughs> definitely your granddaughter. That sounds just like a Terry Ann phrase. You don't have any say in the matter. Oh, anyway, wow, welcome, Barbara. everyone. Welcome. We are so excited you are here to join us for Conversations with Sherry and Terry Ann. I am Terry Ann Porter, Life Coach TA. It's time to defeat those lies of negative self-talk by looking at each lie with a new perspective. Opening your eyes to those unseen possibilities. Pathways will now reveal in front of you onto which you can choose to proceed in truth. My co-host is... Good morning. Happy June. What the heck, right? For those of you that don't know me, I am Sherry Berger, and I am the owner of Here to There Consulting. And we educate business owners with those tools to balance life, business, and finances so that you can have growth, leadership, and success and move from here to there. So we help create those paths to move you from here to there. Welcome, welcome. I am so glad to see people here today. And it looks like we have sun in Kansas City. I didn't even know we could have that. I think that might be success. I thought we were talking about success. That is a definite success right now. Let's celebrate that. <laughs> you know, speaking of success, I was just checking the dictionary. The dictionary describes success as the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. Well, that's what the dictionary says. Sherry, how would you define success? Success, right? You have to have an aim or a focus. So I guess you have to have a goal, right? Is what you're saying? Well, now that's what the description is. What do you think about it? Do you think you need one? I think you ought to have one, right? To have success. But success is, uh, yesterday I ran into a business associate and I'm having one of these days. I know I made this post on our wall, but I was having one of these days when you feel overwhelmed. You're trying to do your family stuff, run your business. And I've been running back and forth a lot to Flanagan, Illinois. So that's been a little crazy, but I want to do that. And it's important to me at this time in my life. But you get crazy, right? And they said, you know, you have a great life. And I think having a great life and balance in all of that, not at all times, right? You can't at all times, is success. So I was like, you're right. I do have a great life. And I have, you're talking about June, I have a huge celebration coming up on Friday. So I'm pretty excited about it. I'm going to leave Saturday to go to St. Louis. But on Friday, I have been married to love of my life for 27 years. That's a great success. And people are like, well, how do you stay married 27 years? And I think you always have those goals and the intentionality of making your marriage or your family, or your business, a priority, right? Ooh. So you make it a priority. And I always tell people, don't get married if you don't want to find out what's wrong with you. Because getting uh, married is the best way to have to start working on yourself. And then if you really don't want to work on yourself, don't become a parent. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> another, right? So I know some people say success is business, and it is. But like in my business, our mission is to help you create the life and business that you deserve. To me, that is success. So anyway, that's just a little bit what I have to say about success. 
Oh, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you, Grace. Grace is so sweet. But what do you think is success, Grace? We would love to hear from you. I just thought of something you just said, Sherry. You said the, that you deserve. How about, I, instead of deserve, I like the word desire. Desire, yeah. Success in life, like she said. But the thing is, I feel like everybody deserves to have the life in business or life in work that they deserve. And I believe even God believes that, right? But we get mm -hmm. so caught up in, maybe deserve is not a good word like you just said, though, because if we really got what we deserved, I don't want that. Right. So maybe it is desire, like you're saying. But more importantly, we get so caught up that we forget that we have a choice. Ooh. Right? So we can choose wisely of what kind of life, what kind of career, mm -hmm. job. I mean, a lot of people, you know, I'm a business coach and a lot of people go into business because they want to have more time for their family or friends or they want. And then I find out that the business owns them and owns their time. Mm -hmm. It becomes their whole purpose. Is that what you really went into business for? So I guess that's why I'm always about creating the life and business. I guess that you desire, like you're saying. And that's why that's our mission for my, my business that I do. Because it breaks my heart when I see that people are losing what success really means to them. Right? So mm -hmm. life is so short. We only have this much time. How are you going to live yours successfully? What is a recent success that you are celebrating? Okay, you got your, your marriage. Is there another success that stands out that to you, even if nobody else thinks it's a success, is a success, let me get the right words out here. To you, it is a success. Well, I'm really impressed with that. We've been doing this for instance, for what, 38 episodes. I've brought all my business online and I've also will realize that I'm better off helping a few and not many. Right? So some of those things I've learned in the business, but there's a goal right now that I'm working on and I didn't know it was another hat that I'm actually learning to do. Mm -hmm. And that's be a grandma. And you're like, what the heck? You just be a grandma. No, really you don't. It's a work life balance again. So how do my son becomes a dad, right? And so my whole relationship with him and oh my gosh, everybody tells you how much you love your grandson until you meet them. You just don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I know you say, oh, I have to figure out how to be a parent, but even how do I intentionally be a good grandma? And so I've only been doing this for 10 weeks. Right. I mean, I'm not. And I thought that's an interesting new challenge or new hat that I'm wearing mm -hmm. and to be successful in that. And what does that mean to me? Right. And what does that mean to Simon? And what does that mean for my son? Right. Cause you want to be supportive in all of that. Right. Right. And all the things, I mean, some people have had those mother-in-laws that, Oh my goodness, they can be a little much. I had in-laws that could be a little much and I don't want to talk about my in-laws. I never had a mother-in-law cause my husband, I know it's strange, but my husband does not have a mom. That's just not what, he had a biological mom, but he was adopted by a single dad. So, you know, it was intra, it was a different dynamics, but I'm saying what kind of, even when you take on being a mother-in-law, what kind of mother-in-law do I want to be to my two daughter-in-laws that I have? Mm -hmm. So sometimes that when we look at those little changes or big changes in our life, like going online is a huge change for my business. So anyway, those are some of the things that I'm working on trying to be more successful. What did Grace just say? M maybe success is really success balance in life and business. Yeah. And that's really what success is for me. And that's really what I want people to have. How do you know that you have achieved that balance, that it's not lopsided? How do you know that you have achieved it? That is an ongoing balance, is it not? It's an ongoing mission. It's an ongoing self-awareness to realize that you need to be aware of that. 
self-awareness. And we all go through different seasons in our life. So our balance changes. One thing that affects my balance, I don't know if you have this, I will, I feel like, oh, I've, it's just right, just even keel. And one person, all it takes is one, makes a comment that I feel is a put down to me. And all of a sudden the balance goes, shoo, because of one person, I, I, I am guilty of letting one person destroy my feeling of success. How do I've, had, I've had that happen to me before. And I think that is great when you, my friend, Gerald, I know I talk about him a lot. My second dad, that used to be when I would call him because mm -hmm. somebody told me and I needed somebody else to counteract what somebody else is telling me and test it right now. Maybe we should test it against scriptures really where we should go. Right. Long-term thing. I get that. But if we have those friends that we can pick up the phone and let them know that you're having a, now Gerald, Gerald was funny because he would laugh. At, <laughs> he, he would laugh about it. See, Terry Ann, what would you tell Allison? Cause you know, <laughs> these guys like to tell her, what would you tell her? Oh, Allison, catch me with my own words. How dare you? <laughs> Yes, I do. Um, it, it is It is sometimes self-talk and sometimes it is having that friend say to you, uh, sometimes we have to stop and look at five people just gave you a compliment. Yeah. One person didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Which direction did you choose? I hate that word, but it's what you do. Which one did you choose to hold on to? Mm -hmm. The other question I started asking is, would you go to that person for advice? Yep. If you won't go to that person for advice, you don't take their criticism. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes I have to, I have to give those little self talks to myself, and and remind myself of you know what. That is a success, and if that person doesn't like it, if that person doesn't like me, doesn't like what I've done, they don't have to participate. That's that's the interesting to learn over time is. You know what? Not everybody's going to like you. And I know that's hard to believe. There are some people who don't like me. <gasps> anyway, <laughs> but it's okay. It doesn't make me a bad person. If this person over here doesn't like me, it just means that we don't drive together. So I'll go hang out with Sherry. I'll go hang out with Allison. They like me. Well, and knowing those people that are going to love you enough to right? if they did say something like, maybe you should have done, they're going to do it in love, right? If they're giving right. you any kind of feedback, it'll be love. And so to know those people, but anyway, this is funny because we were just talking about this. My husband claims I collect people. I love people. I thought everybody should just love Sherry Berger and that's not how life works. And then, so I used to try to be less Sherry Berger because then they'll like me, but you know what? They still don't like me, Terry Ann even when I try not to really be who I am. So then over time, I've learned only person I can be is Sherry Berger. And I'm like, gosh, that's so much easier just to be yourself. I don't even know. And then, like I said, people have called me charismatic, other things. And I'm like, well, I guess that's who Sherry Berger is. And I'm not trying to be rude in who I am, but that's who I am. So not a reason like you, but remember my husband the last couple of years has been telling me everybody's not your friend. I'm like, yes, they are. And he's like, no, we have associates, acquaintances, and then we have friends, Sherry. So I think when you're taking advice or people are telling you something, are you my friend that loves me and supports me no matter what? And are you telling me this for my benefit? Or you maybe you are you associate or acquaintances? Then maybe I hate to say it. I can't believe people would be mean, but some people just want to be mean. Right. Or they're jealous or they just don't like you. Like you said, I don't understand Terry and everybody should like me, but whatever. Some people just don't like me. And so because they don't like me, they're going to say something. I don't know to pop my bubble. I don't know what they're trying to do, but why are we trying to figure that out when we need to go to our, that's why I will pick up the phone and call those people that love me, support me, care about me. And sometimes they're like, why are you even going down that rabbit hole? Pam says, I like go ahead. 
Um, yeah, I like because I do think success is a personal feeling. It's 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 more. It's not necessarily the material items. It's that personal. And I like Pam says to me, success is achieved every time I do my best, regardless of the outcome. Hey, this situation didn't work. I gave my best, and I'm going to celebrate that I gave my best. That's all I can do. And I think that's more that's important because I think it's funny we haven't even touched it. We've been talking for 15 minutes, and something that's not even come up is. To some people, success is the wow house. I know some people who are doing everything they can. They want that wow house or a particular kind of a car. They, and to me, that's that's not success. To me, I look at that and say, oh, how much debt are you in? <laughs> you mean but keeping up with the Joneses is personal. not success? You what? Keeping up with the Joneses doesn't mean I'm successful. Keeping up with the Joneses means that I'm deeper and deeper in debt. And when we go through a recession or a job loss or something, the Joneses get to keep on going because they're not having the difficulties I am. And to keep up with them, I've now lost everything. But even without going into debt, of course, I'm a financial coach too. So get me on this mm -hmm. one. But even without going into debt, what I decide to do with my money could be not buying a fancy car, but maybe going on vacation with my family or so when you're looking at what other people are doing, what are their, what are their choices? Their choices mm -hmm. are different than yours. Remember we get to choose. Look, Kevin and I never had car payments. We still don't have car payments, but we never, cause we paid private school tuition for four children. That was our choice though. Right. And you can right. go back with, I would never do that with my kids. That's fine. That's your choice. Cause we live in the United States. We have these choices. And I only set my kids till eighth grade and only I can say, but I did just like right now, you know, my daughter-in-law, you know, people are judging if you nurse or you give a baby a bottle, if you send your kid to private school or you don't, what do you want to do? And so when you look at the Joneses next door and they have a yacht and they have a motorhome and they have a, what other stuff besides maybe, maybe they're going in debt, but maybe they decided that they weren't going to send their kids to private school or they weren't going to go on that vacation or they weren't. Mm -hmm. So we forget to look at all the, and you can't figure it out because you're not them. Right. So go be the best version of you and be successful. And I liked what she said to be successful is achieving every time I do, you know, what I struggle, but more importantly, what did you learn Ooh. in that experience? Okay. Let me ask you this. Terry Ann and I do Toastmasters. When can you fail in Toastmasters? You can fail every time. It's a good place to fail. But you can fail successfully. even when we fail, what do we say? What did you learn from that? What did you None learn? None of it it's is ever success. failing. It's always about experiences. It's about learning. It's about what could we do different? It's never, we never say we failed because you don't fail because it's the safest place, as you just said, to fail. But did you fail? We always fail forward in Toastmasters. Perspective. And all, and all your Toastmasters family, if you ever try to say you're failing, they're going to look at you and go, you didn't fail. You did this and you learned. So it's sometimes a perspective. Celebrate the learning experiences that is success. When you know you have learned something from trying and giving your best effort, it's never a failure. That's exactly what Toastmasters teaches us. Do they not, mm -hmm. Darianne? Yes. I always say with Toastmasters, get on my big Toastmasters kick. And I think that you should feel this way when you hang out with your friends. Toastmasters, when you come to a meeting, you ought to leave better than you feel. You felt when you got there. And if you don't, that was that was not the right experience. But what if you did that with the people you hung out with? I hope when you go hang out with me, which, by the way, we need to have a cup of coffee, Terry. Yes, but do. I hope when you hang out with me, when you walk away, you feel better than you came. Even if you weren't having a bad day, it's not about that. Did I add value? Did I energize you? Did I make you feel? Mm -hmm. So if you pay attention to who you're hanging out with and when you walk away, how you feel, you'll start figuring out, as people like to call it nowadays, your tribe. Who do you want to be, right? So if that person always is putting you down and making you feel not successful, then they don't want you to be successful. I actually was coaching somebody the other day and her two adult children just don't believe that she can build her business. And it's not because they're trying to be negative. They're trying to be realistic. Just go get a real job, mom. Why are you being an entrepreneur? 
right? And as business owners, I think we get that a lot. But how about your own grown children, right, telling you that? She's like, that's so hard. And I'm like, yeah, but they don't understand. And they're doing it out of love. And they're not trying to be mean. And they are not toxic people. But it's realizing that they don't understand. And you can be a better example and show them. What did Grace put on here? What is a failure is not trying. What is success is failing because you're learning. So you are a success. I just love that everybody's pointing out here how success is an internal feeling. It's an action on your part. Because that's so true. But you know how many times we sit there and we go, I don't want to do that. What if I fail? I have, we have an e-summit coming up, don't we? July yes, 9th and 10th. Do. And I was going to be on an e-summit in March and then a pandemic happened and a lot of stuff happened. So then I was like, well, I was going to speak on an e-summit. I want to speak on an e-summit. I could just ask somebody else to speak on an e-summit. Then I go, or I could do it. But wait, I've never done an e-summit. I don't even know what I'm doing. What if I fail? And now I'm doing an e-summit. But I also went to a friend of mine. I'm just going to let you know. I went to a dear friend of mine. And I said, well, I was thinking about doing this, but I don't even know what I'm doing. And how could I ever put an e-summit together? And da, da, da. yeah, me, I, I'm saying this. The lady that does training and coaching for a living. I know. I was saying that. My friend Terry Ann goes, really? I've never really done an e-summit either. But I've done behind the scenes and I've done this and that. And I could help you. And, and you can do it. So why aren't you doing it? So I went to the right friend and all we were doing was having coffee. You got to watch out when Carrie Ann and I have coffee, <laughs> things like this happen. I don't know. So now we have an e-summit coming up on the 9th and 10th. And we have a bunch of people that know what they're doing, helping us put it all together. But that was scary. Jumping to be on these videos was scary, right, Terry Ann? That was another. Oh, that was very scary. <laughs> on the e-summit, that's way out of my comfort zone. And yeah, we will invite everybody and we're going to be putting flyers out here to invite everybody. I've just since I got on this trance, but it was more about I got out of my comfort zone. So now we have what seven phenomenal speakers on this e-summit. It's going to be about creating the life and business that you love. It's called Purposeful Joy. And it's going to be a Friday night on the 9th and then of July. Yeah, July 9th and 10th. And I want to invite everybody to that. But it was all because I got out of the way of me and my fear. And I got teams that people believed in me, like Terry Ann, Terry Ann's co-hosting. We have all these great people that came together because what do we start doing? Moving forward. And God provided all the resources along the way. <clears throat> Ooh, effort equals experience. This is interesting. <laughs> I always <laughs> like experience. Yeah. Success plus learning and failure is never part of the equation. Okay. I think Pam, you need to put that up in your office. I think you need to post that one. Wow. I, I love this discussion and, and I do love how, because as soon as I hear the word success, I do automatically start to think of the material things. And I just love being around people who say those material things aren't, aren't where success is. It's personal, it's internal, it's, and even if somebody else doesn't, you know, doesn't see it in you, that's okay. Have your tribe, make it personal and keep going forward. It's so an action. It is an action. You have to do something. We had to get online in order to have 38 episodes. We could we couldn't have 38 episodes if we never turned the camera on to begin with. So I love that. I, and I love the way the discussion's going. So you're shocked, Terry Ann, that you and I would have our tribe or audience here that's not materialistic. Oh no, I'm not shocked at that. I guess my mind immediately thought. When I first, when we first started talking about the word success, I started thinking about uh, recently, um, I don't remember who it was, but somebody was saying, I still want my wow house. Little That's things like funny. that were creeping into my head. Like-minded people hang out with like-minded people. 
Yeah, well, I, I, I like the minds of all the people today. The people but that come and join us. I like this kind of thing. And Grace is saying that she loves this discussion. So I'm saying on your tombstone, when you pass on, you're going to say, I wish I had more. What did you say? Wow houses. I wish I had more. Wow. Is that what's going to be on your tombstone? I mean, my mission in life is to make a difference in others. Mm -hmm. My business is all about making a difference in people's businesses by helping them create life and business that they desire, as you're saying, because that's my life mission. My life mission is not see how many cars I can collect and how many houses. Mm -hmm. Now that might be yours and that's okay. But what is your life mis mission? Is it to leave a legacy? Is it to, what is it? And make sure that's what you're focusing on for your success. That's my tip for today. Don't, and don't let anyone take away your feeling of success. And Pam says, mine would all say, I lived a genius life. A genuine life. A genuine, a genuine life. life. Yeah. And so if that's what it is, you should have, you know how we have mission and value and vision for a business. You need mm -hmm. that for your life as well. Ooh. So I set out to write a vision statement for my life one day and they kept telling me it wasn't, a, it wasn't a, was it a mission? And they kept saying, no, no, you're it, it's, but nobody ever tell me what the difference was. So I just held on to it anyway and said, okay, this is mine. A success again. You but it's a great success, success, right? Mm -hmm. And what, what success looks for you is not the same as it looks for me or in why do you want, others to decide what success looks for you. So even though what, if what you are doing does not look like success to me, I really have no say in how you feel about it. And I should keep my mouth shut. In other words, no, you ought to encourage that person to become encouraging the way but yes. they want to be successful. So that is another one of my life. Not mine. The one another one of my life missions, it doesn't have to be yours, is to lead more people to Christ because I feel that's my purpose here on earth. Right now, you might say, well, that's broad, but it is. But that doesn't mean I have to go headbang people with a baseball bat and say, if you don't believe in God, you're going to go to hell. That's not how I'm going to lead others to Christ. So I try every day to be more Christ like so that I can do that. But then again, that's not even about me. That's about the Holy Spirit in me being there, you know what I mean, at the right time. But me not getting in the way of that, if that makes sense. <clears throat> so you are living a life that shows you have, that you are personally comfortable and satisfied with your life. And that is success. I like that description. So do I. I guess you came up with that description. I like that description. You know, and you know what? Speaking of what does it mean to you? Because as we talked, everybody has a different thought of what success is. We're all kind of like-minded in this. I like this though. But everybody does have a different idea of what is success for them. So next week, what is self-esteem to you? What does the term self-esteem mean to you? So you've got a whole week to think about it and come back and join in the conversation with Sherry and Terry Ann. That sounds awesome. And if you're in Kansas City, go enjoy the sunshine. We don't know when it's going to disappear. Guys, go make it a great day. Bye, guys. Bye. See you next week.